All this, no receipts given to the to the uh, myself or the other trustees that I've mentioned. Again, that's not that has true. nothing to do with denying a residence and service. We need receipts to understand what's going on. I conclude. All right. So um, I'm going to conclude with this. That's not true on your statement you just made. And when people read stuff into record, you guys, go get clarity of what it is. Just for the record, y'all do know that we have prisoners that we feed, right? But I shouldn't have to sit up here and break all this down as though y'all just think it's the administration. It is not. Y'all do know we help homeless people. Y'all do know we help residents, right? But y'all don't ask them questions. Y'all do know we rent hotels for people. We got all these things, but why do I have to always try to justify what it is we're doing here? Why? Why Why are we doing that? Why the hell are you giving prisoners Olive Garden? <laughs> they in jail. They should be getting that canned meat or whatever. They in jail. They did a crime. They in jail. Okay. If you want to do some from some charity work, it has nothing to do with the city. Put it all under your 501c3, have a fundraiser, and use that money towards it. This is not a charity. This is it's the city. And yes, you do have to explain. You do have to provide receipts. You think you're the queen. You're not. You're not the queen for today. Don't use that. Why? That's mommy. Use this if you want to smell like that tea. You never had to question if you were a man, so why give your money to a corporation that doesn't know if their products are made for men? Try Jeremy Razor's hair and body products. Jeremy's shampoo and conditioner are made with tea tree oil to naturally clean and restore your hair and scalp, argan oil to soften your hair and not your masculinity, and aloe vera to moisturize the hair and scalp. It's all paraben-free, sulfate-free, phthalate-free, and most importantly, 100% woke-free. Not to mention, it smells amazing. Go to JeremyRazors.com and use my special code BURNS15 to save 15% off. That's JeremyRazors.com. Use my special code BURNS15 to save 15% off. I call her the turn up mayor. Some people on YouTube, they're calling her the city chick. I think the city girl mayor. Uh, she calls herself the super mayor, um, but she was the youngest mayor elected in Dalton County, Illinois, or Dalton, Illinois. And she holds two positions, mayor, and she's the su uh, township supervisor. And she's been running amok. And this latest news that I just discovered, she emailed Fox 32 Chicago saying that their attacks on her have been racist and misogynistic because they are reporting the news. So let's see who we got online. Matt is in the building. Matt, um, this this is the composer of my intro music. www.scoresomemusic.com. Matt put it in the chat. www.scoresomemusic.com. So this first video I want to show you. Back in June, and only reason why I want to talk about this or show this particular video because it's going to allude to um, the news article that I want to present to you guys. And in this news article, um, Tiffany Henyard, she emailed this to Fox 32 News saying you guys are not being fair when you're posting stuff on the news. You got it all wrong. Can you um, elaborate a little more about what is going on so people can understand what's happening? And new, stop writing about me and y'all ain't got y'all facts. Y'all wrote that I removed her from office and I did no such thing. I did not lock her out of no office. I don't even have a dispute with that lady. So I wish people stopped lying on my name. And I hope y'all write that. That's for your record when you do write this article about me. Because you only come here for the mess. You guys do not come here for anything positive we've done that has been done in this township, such as we got a whole surplus when there's always been a deficit here in the township. Y'all didn't write that, right? And then when y'all want to know the truth about the township, y'all come <coughs> here bring my line about the theft that's going on at the township before I became this supervisor. But y'all not writing about none of that stuff. So stop. Keith, you got the floor. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, so to set this record straight, um, Supervisor Henyard in no way 
uh, remove the assessor from her office. The supervisor has, uh, excuse me, the assessor has access to the assessor's office, which is located on this side of the building. Uh, she has a key fob that gets her in her office. Her, uh, her office was relocated to an area so that we can take care of some business in her office area. Um, she did not call and ask us why she was being relocated. She did not call and ask us. Um, so you you know Keith is her like little henchman. Now this this is what I get from it from my what all the videos that I've been seeing and the names that came out and looking at these videos. Keith is the henchman and she was definitely locked out of her office. You can't say you're going to move somebody's office and not tell them. And then they're playing games as as far as the FOIA request. So you can't say oh and uh, holding on because she processed the for your records um you have access to your office but then in a, another sentence you said oh she um we relocated her office but she didn't ask us um she didn't ask us well yeah she didn't ask you to relocate her office and why why does she have to come why did you relocate my office you shouldn't have relocated it to to finish up some business what was the business that you have to finish up in her office that that is so mind boggling to me. Any information about that? There were no files left out. All of the files were locked up. Um, whoever took the files out, you know, left them on the tables for the media and you know whatever that interview was. Uh, that's completely false. Um, and I will go even further to say this: um, it has been brought to my attention, and I informed the supervisor um, that there is an office that has been set up as the assessor's office in Calumet City. Um, and I informed the supervisor and I informed our attorneys. Uh, that is why this, uh, that is why this motion is uh, being placed on the agenda. And um, it is a, um, it is up to the board to decide whether or not the assessor or any other officer of Thorny Township or any other body of government um, can operate outside of its normal facilities and or buildings. Um, that is all I have, supervisor, if you have any questions or any other board members. Yes, thank you. I'll have a question. So you didn't receive any emails or calls from the assessor? I didn't receive anything from the assessor questioning whether or not. Um, any any call? Well, no, I say the past two weeks. No, I hadn't received. I have no to, call, no emails. I have not spoke to the assessor at all. Well, that's not what I'm asking. Did you receive any emails? Or okay, calls he, he answered the question. We're not going to answer the question. question. We're not. You're, you're you're not. not. Thank you. You're no, I still, very well, I still have questions. You, you can ask. Okay. Well, I'm but not, he asked. He, he's he not answer them. Then? Okay. He so asked, he asked for this. You not going back to calls or emails? I have not. I have so not. So the assessor's office was moved from the previous office to a different office. So are you admitting she has office? Because I just want to know what's this little pony show for. So you admitting she has office, right? Trust no, me. I'm no, no, you asking the question. So. And this is where she really goes off the rails for me. You know. It's like you, you're not answering the question. Number one, you moved her office. You moved her office without notice. That's why she couldn't get into her original office. And that's why the problem exists. And then another thing the assessor noted in this video, not this particular video, but the video with the news camera, uh, she was saying that uh, they, they're holding papers that she's not able to process or do her work because they're holding the papers so she can't process stuff if um i think i think she mentioned the name keith is sitting on his desk and he's not even supposed to have the information he shouldn't even be getting a request because that's not even his job but anyway they're going back and forth was it was it moved to another office since you got all answered was it moved i to don't another know office? that's why i'm asking a question you should know you trust me so well, you exactly. don't know, you don't know no communication. There is no communication. She has the office. That's my in office. In this building. She has the office. But it's not the previous office. She has the office. office. But it's not the previous one. I just asked. What's your next question? It's not the previous one. What's your next that's question? What, that's my question. I just asked. No, you didn't. Anything else? No, yes. It's not the previous office. Okay. So is that I'm, correct? I'm done with not? it. No, um, answer the questions. I just yeah. need. Uh, no, anything no, else? Point of order. Point of order. Any other questions from anybody else? You're not answering the questions. Just the no, any other question. So is this based on any sort of law saying that a assessor can I mean the assessor any assessor within the state will have say like a program a satellite outside of the building. I mean so I mean is there any sort of bad state kind of law or that you have basing this on or she cannot remove herself from this building. 
Say it so she hasn't. The, the, office, the office has. itself is still operational. I just explained it to you. No, that's. Oh, so that's, here's that's, our question. I thank you for no. answering that to the media. So the media, they said it's locked out, so they're still there. Thank you. Well, the assessor was locked out. The assessor was not locked out. That's not true. <laughs> yes, it is. So you know the answer. Which one? Yeah, don't I know. Yeah, I know. How do you know that? You just said you don't know. You ain't been in it. Which one is it, trustee? Well, you just said you haven't been in there, but now you're saying that you know. I never said I haven't been in there. You did. No, I didn't. I did not say I haven't been Okay, but we're not going to do the back and forth. I understand you some some <laughs> points for the news. I just answered there's, all your questions. For the record, she has not been locked out of her office. She needs to come back here to this building. This is her office here in the township at the 333 East 162nd Street. So that's what she needs to come and do and do her job that she got elected to do. Period. Okay, Ain't no go back to Calumet City. She cannot do it. So this is why this comment. I have a question. Is Calumet City part of the township? Out of order. Right now, this is a discussion among the board. So now, so maybe is that based on some, is going to be the attorney's opinion on it? She cannot do it. True, attorney's opinion. What's the attorney's opinion? That she has to ask. Why? Sure, and, and thank you for your question. I have not, I have not done a complete comprehensive legal review of this matter, but the corporate authorities of the township are the only, only individuals that, are, that have the power to rent, lease, or own, or purchase real or personal property. Uh, and that's just by statute through the township code, mm -hmm. paragraph C of section 85-10. And it's not for, uh, any such action has to be done by the township board, whether to release property, um, for instance, at, a, at an auxiliary or separate type of office or location. Uh, the other second issue is the importance of any records that are used or created or retained by the assessor are official Thornton Township records that need to be housed at an official Thornton facility, such as this office. Uh, so those are the two main reasons uh, why uh, the assessor would be limited as far as the need to operate out of township facilities, which is this location. But in this instance, is that the official case that there is space being leased? Well, that's just my understanding. Um, <clears throat> but regardless, again, there's the, the location is at the township and not at some other, other auxiliary location where authority doesn't exist. And that's just the extent of the facts that I currently have. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank so you. Legally, she cannot operate out of the township. Yeah, based on my prior statement, that's correct. And so based on this motion, I mean, so what, it, it's kind of asking two things, though. I mean, are you asking to declare it absent or requesting that she back? She has not been here, so we're telling her this is her office. She did not set up another office, which is made all these statements. So that's what the motion is for. You're going back and forth, but you gotta vote now, so. Why are we going back and forth? She has not been in her office. She is supposed to be here at this location. But she has an office and access to it. Where is that office? Right behind us. Right behind us. It's not New Park. Her office is where it always has been. It's right here. But she will know that. It's the same office. It's the same office. You know where it is. Look, I'm go back and forth. Anything else? Anything else? All right, so All right it's thank you. It's a motion thing. and a second on the floor. End of discussion. Motion second mm -hmm. on the floor. Please call the roll. Thank you. So she, like I said, she didn't really answer the questions. Um, and she's always been combative because she knows that she's she's in the wrong, period, point blank. I don't care what nobody says. This lady is in the wrong. Um, and it's so surprising to me that a lot of these people are elected. Why are you so scared of this lady? You, you all were elected. You all are elected officials. So why why are you scared to speak up? Um, anyway, and then you have your little henchmen that people don't, you know, so supportive of her. And she's spending your taxpayer dollars like she's some type of mob boss or some crap. Anyway, so it leads me to my next subject. It says Thornton Township Supervisor Tiffany Henyard threatened Fox 32. Published that letter. They published this letter. It says after the scathing and truthful reports on Thornton Township Supervisor and Dalton Mayor Henry, uh, Tiffany Henyard last week, Henyard sent a letter which threatened to make certain information public in reference to the Fox 32 reporter. Her threats apparently carried no water outside Thornton Township and the village of Dalton. In the letter, she complains about custody battle she is going through with her daughter. 
and then accuses i don't know what ha one has to do with the other I, I really don't know but then she accuses a fox 32 of conflict of interest this one made us laugh on Henry. it's a walking conflict of interest as the as a public official a continuous racial and misogynistic targeted coverage of Henyard, Dalton and Thornton Township. No, I, I don't think it's racist and I don't think it's um misogynistic. I think you're making a bad name for yourself. Whoever squeaks the loudest get the most attention. You're squeaking the loudest, so they're gonna give you the most attention. And the the loud noise that you're you're doing, it's irritating. So people want to know what what are you talking about? You're you're saying bitch don't have my money during the meetings, Rihanna. You dressing up like Nino Brown and carrying a fake dog with you, you know. So of course that brings attention. And then you're charging residents. This was not too long ago for parking tickets, five hundred dollars for parking tickets, and you expect people to be like all in your corner. Anyone that combats you or that don't support you, you find a way to screw them over. You use city services to harass people. So the public has every right to know who they voted for, what kind of person they voted for. You had the audacity to hire some a sex, a violent sex offender and gave him the authority to go inside people's homes. So yeah, and the news is there for to report. So any of the things that you're saying, racist and misogynistic, I'm black. I guess I'm being racist. There's a lady that's, um, I think her name is Pink something things or Pink something. I forget her YouTube channel. I'll bring it up. But she has several videos about her. Tiffany Henry. And she's a way bigger channel than I am. And she's a black woman. So are we, you just being like, it's other black people are reporting on you. White and black. So what are we saying here? Because you're a black woman, you get to act, act a ass and act a fool and spend people money illegally, spend the township money illegally, um, engaging in malicious smear campaign against me. She's so narcissistic. This, all the characteristic, oh, there's smear, a smear campaign. Like um, you're smearing yourself. Uh, she's earned this coverage by her own actions. Yeah, well, that's what I... I just said that uh, print cover and producing false and defamatory accusations towards her and members of her staff in blatantly erroneous manner. Mm, no. <laughs> Subjecting Fox 32 and other media sources to liability, violating ethics standards of Fox 32. This one made us laugh. Henry talking about ethics because she has not. You can't tell people to say, you can't tell people have a code of ethics and you don't use them. And kite, kite fly. No, the lady was fired. That trustee member was fired. They showed it on the news. Go to your Dalton trustee YouTube channel. They have the police walking her out saying she was terminated. She did not quit. So she's harassing people. She's going around harassing people. Now, this let's read this letter right quick. This is the letter that she wrote. Consider this communication a formal request to the leadership and staff of Fox 32 News Chicago to address its conflict of interest and continuous racial and misogynistic target coverage of myself, the village of Dalton, Thornton Township, and all agency I represent as a public official. It is no coincidence that Fox 32 investigative journalist Tia Ewing Walker, wife of Early Walker, has used her influence as a journalist to convince staff members at your network to engage in malicious smear campaign against me and my staff to discredit the positive work we do, we do here in the South Suburbs as a means to assist her husband as we engage in the custody dispute over our child, Miss Ewing, Ewing stepdaughter. Um, why, why she put all that information in there? Um, by allowing Miss Ewing and other journalists like Dan, Dane Placco to print, cover, and produce knowingly false and defamatory accusation towards myself and countless members of my staff is blatantly erroneous manner. You are subjecting Fox 32 
its networks and other media sources to liability. Uh, this behavior also violates the ethical standard of Fox 32 has been known to uphold. Uh, and she, you know, you can't say whatever, what ethical standards, unless you got their book, you know, you got the HR manual or something. What are you talking about? Ethical standards? Or are you talking about just like ethical standards, FCC rules? Or what, what are we saying here? So she just putting stuff out there. Furthermore, if you continue to purposely produce bias and non-factual content about me, why is this bias and non-factual? You, she must doesn't, she probably don't know that they have a trusty YouTube channel, a Dalton trustee YouTube channel. They produce stuff. Some of the views on that, uh, on their things are, and they only got a thousand followers or 2000 followers. Some of the views they get on their, their YouTube channel is ridiculous. So what is, she, what is she saying? Fox two is not, or Fox 32 is not the only thing that's printing stuff about her. We're, we're actually seeing meetings being upload, uploaded on the internet about you and how crazy you're at. So this is not false or made up information. This is actual information because people are seeing it. Furthermore, if you continue to purposely produce bias and non-factual content about me, I would use whatever resources at my disposal to ensure that the public is aware of this conflict of interest and Fox 32 failure to address it. Um, so they, they're saying, okay, we're making it public. That's what you, okay, you can make it public, but we're, we're going to beat you to the punch. We're, we made this public on June 5th. So how, whatever she put on there, they published many articles after this, after this was received. Um, so, um, given Ms. Ewing and Mr. Placco's interest in our community, I thought I should mention that the Thornton Township was just awarded the Government Finance Office Association, Officers Association of the United States and Canada Certificate of Achievement of Excellent in Financial Reporting. So now you're, you're, you're probably lying when for prior years, because you didn't do it this year, because as I'm going to show you one video where one of the guys was saying, Hey, we can't pay it if you don't produce receipts. And she like, why well, I got to explain why I don't see why I got to explain why I got, you know, whatever I spend, why I got to explain it, why I got to produce receipts. And like I said, prior in other videos, if you kite or Hey, if you know her personally, you need to tell her, look up Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick. He had that same sentiment. She, he didn't want to answer questions to the public and the council members and the board. And you know what happened to him? He got 28 years and he was about 38 years old. He got 28 years. And you know why he's out now? It's because Donald Trump. That's the only reason why Kwame Kilpatrick is walking three, but they threw the book at his ass. Because he didn't want to answer questions. Because he was spending money and taking money from the people. And he didn't want to answer questions. So somebody needs to tell her that. You got to answer questions. You're you're a public servant. Um, so she she's saying that I believe this and other relevant information was left out. None of these topics would help me. Miss Ewing's husband is in a legal dispute with me. So they remain uncovered by your station. I don't know. Should uh, so I think Tia Ewan Walker, she she's the one who works, and I know the other guy, her baby daddy or ex husband maybe. Um, he probably like woo dodge that bill. <laughs> that woman is a mess. <laughs> so anyway, so they're they're on this ongoing dispute. And topics will help Miss Ewing's husband in a legal dispute with me. So they remain uncovered by your station, whatever. Should Fox 32 or its affiliate like to discuss how they could work with my office to cover the many positive programs? No, that's not, that's not how news work. News work, they report good and bad. People like bad though. People like hearing the bad. Yeah, they got your special, your chitlin special. Yeah, they, they saw you was... Hosting the car wash and chitlin special, the techno fun, but you did bad stuff all all in cahoots to do the the good stuff. Like your your march to Springfield. You stole ten thousand dollars from the township. So they covered that. Now, if you just marched to Springfield and didn't steal the ten thousand dollars, they wouldn't have to cover that. But you firing people, shutting people out that you have no authority to do, block blocking the roads so 
people can't have events because you had the same event on your event. So yeah, they're going to cover that. So you're shining the light on your bad deeds. Instead of just saying, hey, people have the right to have an event the same day I have an event. Or instead of asking the person that was hosting the event, do you mind if I set up a booth or do you mind if I bring techno to you? And they probably would have said no because car show and techno don't really go together. But anyway, you're you're doing it to yourself. Anyway, so they port, report the good and the bad. Let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, should Fox 32 Chicago or its affiliate like to discuss how we could work with my office to cover the many positive program services that developments, initiatives, and community events that both the village of Dalton and Dorton Township are proud to promote, feel free to reach out to Keith Freeman. Um, and I will, what I say, I look forward to your response and resolving this conflict and how we could work together to focus on the issue of our residents. Consider um, a priority. If your response does not adequately resolve this issue in a timely manner, I plan to releasing the contents of this letter to the public. And they already released it, Tiffany. They already released it. Tomorrow, I'm going to look up journalist Tia Ewan Walker. I think I found her in Early Walker. Okay, so she she's so convinced that she had her um, Tia Walker is imprinted in her brain to say, oh, go you know, Tiffany Dalton is a mess. Go report about her. Or Tiffany Henyard is a mess. Report about her. No, you're stirring up the mess. They don't They don't need any help from the staff. They got their own story to work on. And it's, the story is about you. This next video is about is about them showing the receipts. And she, she like, I don't want to show the receipts. Okay. There's on this list specifically, there is nothing to do with windows or roofs or nobody being removed. That has, that has absolutely nothing to do with this. Trusty House then went on to explain the items he was questioning, which were special, to say the least. Some of the items that we are talking about, Aurelio's Pizza, $131. Best Western, apparently two rooms for $318. Chicago Midway Airport, $200 worth of tax dollars spent on that. Cooper's Hawk, $557.68. Got Dollar Tree on here, $108. Dunkin' Donuts, $49.58. What else we got? Where, where else did we eat at? Holiday Inn in Bloomington. Two, four, six, seven rooms, $2,694. Image one, Italian Fiesta, $113.59. Jewel Osco, $100.50. Olive Garden, $262.78. Pete's Fresh Market, $212.97. Let's see if we ate anywhere else. <laughs> Thank me later, $520. Walmart, $11.11. Good Lord. Wyndham Hotel and Resorts, two, four, six, eight rooms, totaled up to $1,085. All this, no receipts given to the to the uh, myself or the other trustees that I've mentioned. Again, not it has true. nothing to do with denying a residence and service. We need receipts to understand what's going on. I conclude. All right. So um, I'm going to conclude with this. That's not true on your statement you just made. And when people read stuff into record, you guys, go get clarity of what it is. Just for the record, y'all do know that we have prisoners that we feed, right? But I shouldn't have to sit up here and break all this down as though y'all just think it's the administration. It is not. Y'all do know we help homeless people. Y'all do know we help residents, right? But y'all don't ask them questions. Y'all do know we rent hotels for people. We got all these things, but why do I have to always try to justify what it is we're doing here? Why? Why Why are we doing that? Why the hell are you giving prisoners Olive Garden? <laughs> they in jail. They should be getting that canned meat or whatever. They in jail. They did a crime. They in jail. Okay. If you want to do some from some charity work, it has nothing to do with the city. Put it all under your 501c3, have a fundraiser, and use that money towards it. This is not a charity. This is it's the city. And yes, you do have to explain. You do have to provide receipts. You think you're the queen. You're not. You're not the queen for today. Because people that don't do none, you never see, never active, get up here. And then you love to down people. This is another problem I don't like about Tiffany Henry. You you love to down people. You talking about oh you never see them doing nothing and you you have them. He is doing his job. 
He need the damn receipt so he could pay the bills. That's his job to question you. So you won't spend money frivolously. That's why they have a trust. That's why they're called trustees. So you won't be randomly spending shit. And you actually literally supposed to go to them. Oh, what's in the budget? How much do we have on the budget allocated for this? How much should we allocate for this uh, this month or this quarter or this year? Usually you do that prior to you start spending money. And she's been, like I said, this woman has all the capabilities of being a good mayor because she's been on the board for eight years. She, she is very capable, but she refuses to be a great mayor because she wants to be the turn up queen or Nino Brown, Miss Nino Brown. She refuses. And the people of Dalton elected her. And just say things out, but never give you no clarity of what department it is. Each item that's on our thing, it has a code. It tells you which department spent the money. It tells you that. Again, I keep telling you the day-to-day -day operation. Yes, I'm the overseer of the village, but the management handles their own department, spends their own money. And they put it on a warrant list and give it to the board. But yet people got to do a spin of what they think it is, but don't ask no legitimate questions because I've asked the same questions on sometimes when I read it. And when I read it, I get clarity and I say, oh, okay, y'all went to y'all about the, um, the inmates, um, McDonald's or pizza or whatever they bought. Them. I'm just getting that as an example because I had to learn too. So they should learn before they make judgment or just put things out there and don't have no facts. That's what I mean by not having facts. All right, then we will ask the residents, like the mayor said, who are the homeless Dalton residents that the super duper mayor has helped by taking them down to Bloomington, Illinois, and got them a hotel room, actually eight hotel rooms, along with multiple expensive fancy meals. We're also curious to know which inmates she fed at Cooper's Hawk. Yeah, as far as I'm we like know, it. and we do know as a fact, prisoner meals consist of McDonald's. That's all, nothing more. Not only did the super duper narcissistic mayor lie to the residents by making herself appear as charitable and generous by helping the homeless, but she threw her department heads under a very large, very criminal looking bus. We want to caution her employees to think twice about the loyalty offered to her. She just showed the world she has no shame in blaming you for her wrongdoing. So, you know, like I said, this is on the Dalton trustee YouTube channel. <laughs> So the Dalton trustee don't trust her. They do not like her. 